Hello. So sorry about the, uh, the delay, but thank you all for, for staying on. Um, so let me get my notes up. So, um, so basically, at, uh, at Oxfam, I'm a digital fundraising lead. We have a lot of different teams at Oxfam doing different things. So we have some people doing development work, some people doing campaigning, some people on the shop side, some people um, working on all, all different things. And, and for me, it's about the fundraising area. Um, the, the primary areas that I look at are how to attract people in the first place, how to engage them with what Oxfam is doing, convert them into some form of giving, and then to encourage them to stay for as long as possible as a, as a supporter. So the way I fit in to the organization really is across these teams. Where's the thing? Right, there it is. Um, so supporter acquisition, these are the three main teams in public fundraising. So we have supporter acquisition, supporter retention, and the engagement team. And engagement is um, regional fundraising and events. So sports and adventure typically is people who get muddy for Oxfam. So all of, these, all of these areas of fundraising typically were quite offline, and Oxfam's been around for over 70 years, and only in relatively recent time has it become a digital-facing organization. So um, just to pick up, sorry, the, the things, the three sort of areas that I work on there, it's sort of like an internal consultancy. So different people in those teams will pop up and say, this is what we're doing, how might you support us in that work? Um, or we'll work on particular projects, or we'll say, okay, this is a broad area of strategy that we think that we should be looking at as an organization. So digital for us is, um, is meaning that the landscape is changing in fundraising, and so things are changing for Oxfam, and I just thought that today I'd try and just highlight a few ways that digital has changed things for us, and pick out a few examples of, of, of that change. So, You'll see here that the, uh, the income is really, really changing. So a few years ago, um, it was below 10% coming from digital. And at times now, it's way over 20% of our monthly income is coming through digital channels. So over the course of the year, it's gone up about 5% year on year. But this is rapid change. So we really need to be doing more uh, rather than less to, to, to sort of uh, accommodate that. It's also important that we're device agnostic. So mobile, in previous, world, uh, previous days, I used to work in commercial businesses, and I was head of mobile at places like um, uh, Maxim Magazine and LastMinute.com. And, and there, we were saying, yep, yeah, mobile's going to be the next big thing. And now we're, trying, we're finally seeing that that really is happening. So just to pull out a few stats for you here that we're seeing at Oxfam now, I don't know if you can see that, but 20% of our traffic came from mobile last year, and about the same came through tablets. Now, that's all well and good, and we're all getting very excited about that level of traffic coming through mobile, but income isn't following the same path. So only 4% of our revenue is coming through mobile. So this is showing us a huge opportunity, basically, and a real area of focus. We have a lot of people who are reaching us through mobile, but not necessarily giving to us. But that's not true for everything. So I've just split out two different areas here. We've got the whole site, and then we've got our 100K events. So 100K events are where people walk across the, uh, the Yorkshire Dales for us, or the South Downs, and they keep walking for 100 kilometers, and it's, it's pretty much 25 hour event, and they do that to raise money for us. It's in the Getting Muddy department. And with that, we've got around 50% of people who are reaching us from, on mobile devices, and um, very few actually coming through on desktop. So th this for us is showing a bit of a change. When you're looking at specific audience groups, we really need to be good on mobile. So just to go through a few of the things we've worked on, I was asked to talk about a few case studies of ways that digital has helped fundraising. So I'm literally just going to go through things that we've done and hope that some of it's interesting to you in some way. So first of all, we raise funds on site. So we've done things like we've taken our regular giving form and we've made it mobile friendly. And this seems like a really, really obvious thing to do, but in doing it, we doubled the amount of people who became regular givers on this form. So this is hugely important to our work going forward. We've also done things around uh, user journeys. So people who support Oxfam may do so by signing a campaign or by shopping on, on, on our online shop. 
And we've sort of thought to ourselves, okay, what happens after that? Where do they go next? And where do we want them to go? What do we think they might be interested in? So after an Ebola take action ask here, where we said, please sign this petition, we just put a, why not share it, but then also, why not donate? Which seems very obvious, but it wasn't something we'd done before because we were worried that people would be put off. And what we actually found was that, obviously, a lot of people did click it, and a lot of people who didn't actually click that button, their onward giving actually went up as a result of us having put the button there and it sort of dropping a seed of thought in there for coming back later. And by doing this, we ended up with thousands of thousands more pounds. What does it say? Uh, 18, 18,700 more pounds through, uh, through, through putting that there. So this is the type of thing we work on. Mobile marketing, or specifically SMS giving, has been massively uh, a growing area for us. So whether it be street fundraising, or direct response TV, or press ads, or our shop windows, whatever, we, we basically have lots and lots of people who will engage with this for the first time through SMS. We offer three core services, which is a free message, which is, I'm interested in a thing, please give me some info or a one-off gift, which you'll all be familiar with, or a subscription service, which is a really, really growing area for us. So people would rather give by text, perhaps, than by a direct debit. We also are testing in everything we do. And we did hear a test on uh, a push message around an emergency. And we decided to send out and ask, you're welcome to get up and move if I'm in your way, sorry. Um, but we basically sent, on the left, it says, hello, please will you give a fiver? And on the right, it says, would you give three, five, or 10. And there was a lot of fear around this. People were really worried about, internally about, hang on a sec, Matt, we know that the left-hand version works for us and we know what's gonna happen. Let's not muck about with it, but we gave it a go anyway. And actually what we found was that by giving choice, we got a much better response and people were more generous. And it, it's really been something that we've learned from and we've, we've, we've carried on doing. So just there, we had a 2% better response rate and got £1.30 more in gifts. And over the last year or so, we've seen huge growth. So just to pick out a couple of numbers there, over 350,000 single gifts and over 1.2 million in donation income. Two years ago, that was around £100,000 in donation income. So it's really, really rocketed up. And just around the Nepal earthquake, we had half a million pounds donated by text in, in a month. So in terms of, I know this is an old technology, but in charity land, we're very excited about it and it's working very well for us. So we're also looking at ways that social media can help fundraising. We've, uh, we've been told quite a lot that social media is a terrible, terrible channel for giving and no one does it unless you're doing some kind of challenge event. And people have positioned social media a bit like it's um, talking about giving and fundraising on social is a bit like what's appropriate around the dinner table. So you probably wouldn't at a dinner party talk about the fact that you give £10 a month to Oxfam, but you would talk about the fact you're climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. It's an appropriate conversation to have. So we've basically thought, okay, how do we try and put giving conversations into an appropriate social space? So we try something with Band of the Year, with Oxjam. Oxjam is a, a music event that we put on every year. It's a local grassroots music festival where people put on their own gigs, and they all raise money uh, for Oxfam. So what we did was we thought, okay, we need to give a little back here. So we gave people the chance of enter, putting people in for Band of the Year, bands who were at their gigs, or entering themselves, and getting people to vote for it. And as they voted, um, it shared on their Facebook wall and went to more and more people. So what we hoped to get from this was basically more people aware of Oxjam and more email subscribers to our newsletter. And it was phenomenally successful, successful actually. We had 96% of the 5,000 odd people who signed up to it um, were new to Oxfam and half of those um, were, um, were, were, were willing to hear from us more. So. Uh, and during the time of this campaign, it was actually one of the highest uh, traffic driving pages to Oxfam's, uh, on Oxfam's site. So we're really, really excited about this. And it sort of proved that social can be a great hand raiser for, for, for fundraising. We've also looked at ways of using different digital mechanics in fundraising journeys in terms of meeting people and saying, will you have an onward conversation about Oxfam? So this is an example of what we did at festivals. 
So this is at Glastonbury last year, where we have lots and lots of people who do campaigning for us, and they go around and say, will you stand by us on an issue? So these guys went around and we said, will you make a song and dance about poverty? And basically people said, yeah, all right, then we're up for this. We think this is, this is quite fun and, uh, and we'll do something. So we asked people to sing for us, have a picture taken, and we mashed this up into a great big uh, video at the end, which we then put out. Um, this is where there was a video of someone being stupid, so just take my word for it, it's a very entertaining video, would have been here. Um, so people basically took part, and we had 18,000 people who said, yep, we'll do something with you. So what we then did is we said, okay, on the Monday after the festival, we sent them a text which said, thanks very much, here's a picture of you doing that thing that you did at the festival. And here it is on Facebook. We invited people to tag themselves on Facebook so that it reached more people. And then we linked to our page so that anyone who saw the fact that their friend had been tagged on this thing then may come to our site and do it themselves. And we gave everyone an opportunity to, con uh, to call in and leave their own uh, song or uh, piece of content around poverty. Then, after all the festivals had, done, had been done over the, over the season, we basically sent people a text and said, this is a, an exclusive, you did something with us, here's a download of a track for free to you. And this basically ended up with quite a lot of traffic coming and downloading this track, which we were really impressed with. We had much lower expectations of how many people would actually download the track. So a few thousand we were pretty happy with. And then we ended up with 800 and something new regular givers after this activity. So this is a lovely way that it sort of went from being silly in a field through to ongoing support of Oxfam. So this is a really, really nice way that digital has gone across our, our, our journey. We also did some stuff on uh, crowdfunding where we picked three projects and we said, do you want to choose one of these projects to support? Create your own fundraising page and go off and, uh, and do your own sort of regional fundraising for Oxfam. This didn't go brilliantly, but the crowdfunding thing did make a lot of people laugh, so we got a lot of exposure for it. Basically what happened with this is mid-trial, I think the, uh, the Philippines typhoon occurred, so we kind of stopped promoting it, and that happens quite a lot for us, and, uh, and we have to divert attention to other things. But we felt that the mechanic was quite successful, and so we went into, um, we went into our own branded peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages, which actually resulted in people being a bit more generous than they would on other peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and we got lots more people opting in for, for contact with Oxfam. So, just as a final, uh, a final point, really, we also try to, make new, we try to make space for new areas of giving. And you may have seen this recently, where we, we tried uh, an NFC piece of giving. Um, and what we did here is we started it very, very simple with between Christmas and New Year, I was in the office, it wasn't that busy, I got an NFC tag and we basically thought, can we program it to do something? We stuck this up on the wall and we invited people to tap their Android phone and see how they got on with it. And enough people were interested with this that we thought that we would uh, we'd do more with it. So we put it in shop windows and we invited people to tap to give. And although not millions of people have done this, some people have done it, and it's actually been more than those who would have just texted in from a shop window. So we thought, okay, by doing something new, this has actually encouraged more participation. But then we thought, okay, what can we do to give a bit back? And we got these, um, these, these bracelets and we gave them to street fundraisers. And the, the street fundraiser, when they've spoken to someone, will basically say, okay, thank you very much for your time. Do you want to see the impact of our work? You know, you're interested in, in, in the types of thing we, we do. And if you tap your phone on this wristband, it directs you to a video, a very short video, about Oxfam's work in the year so far. Just a way of kind of reaffirming, right, you, you've supported this and here's what you're doing. So in summary, and I hope I'm all right for time, but um, basically people get digital. It's a very, very easy way for people to, link in, to people to engage. Within a meter of all of us, arms reach probably less than a meter, uh, is your mobile phone. The, the, lowest, uh, the sort of lowest effort way of getting involved with this is to send a text or, or to tap something or to find something on your phone. Uh, and we're very aware of that. Um, digital can help us to start journeys. It can be all of the journey or just a part of it. And basically it's just to... I hope that this has just been a few examples of ways in which we've used digital 
as parts of journeys or as entire journeys to, to encourage giving and support of Oxfam. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. Doing questions or no? yeah, I need you to stay here though. Okay. Um, they've asked me to ask you to remain on stage, have a couple of questions, and then Pip is going to come on stage, and you guys are going to have more of a Lovely. debate, I believe. Okay. That's all right. Yeah. All right, brilliant. So, it, any questions? <laughs> no. Good. Okay. <laughs> Over there, please. <laughs> How does it work in terms of Oxfam? Do you have a budget that you have to spend? Because I know you try, you know, you tried a lot of different things there. But how does it work in terms of cost? So, to try something new, is there a budget you have to spend? A percentage it has to come back because there's a lot of things that could raise money, but it might be very expensive to implement it compared to the money you need to make back from that. Yep. How does that work? Uh, we're sensible with our spend. Basically, we're very cautious. So. You know, having come from a, a commercial background before, we may have been a bit more willing to take some risks on things. Um, we would now calculate what do we think will come back from this. So something like this is about a pound. So it was okay for us to buy 20 of these and give it a go, right? There are other things that may be a bit more expensive and we say, okay, do we really think this will work? Can we, can we find any other examples of where it has worked? Um, but there'll always be, we, we probably would go to trial first and then before we rolled it out bigger than that. It's probably cheaper to try things digitally oh, than it would yeah. be to print something or to True. you know, put something on the side of a bus and see if bus advertising works. You know, so in a way, it's, it's very quick to give a go to something digitally. Okay, cool. And it's also really, really uh, measurable. So it's probably one of the most measurable channels out there. Um, and that, that's, that's in our favor. So, thanks.